Hello everyone, this is Viewer's Choice, everyone's favorite. I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borosh, and today we're going to look at some awesome games. Alright, let's start with this one. Hi! First of all, thanks for giving us viewers the opportunity for submitting our games. Sure, you're welcome. Could you take a look at the attached game which I played with black pieces? Thank you, Dem Segal. I hope I said it correctly. Alright, so e4, e6, d4, d5, e takes d5. I'm not a fan of the exchange French with either color. I think you should never do this, even when you want to. If you really want to do it, just don't do it. So anyways, you should play knight c3, knight d2, or anything. Just don't take on d5. It's not helping your game. And you'll see why. So he takes d5, knight f3, bishop d6. Now, even in the exchange variation of the French, you can be ambitious. You could play c4, for example, trying to challenge this pawn on d5 and attacking it with the c pawn. Knight f6, knight c3, and actually you get a very interesting game. Yes, you can get an isolated pawn, but you will get a monstrous bishop that will just hit on this f7 pawn. Also, in the future, maybe annoy that king on g8. So it's castles, knight g2, etc. But this is an interesting variation. Knight f3, you're kind of setting yourself up for a not very good variation with white. Bishop d6. But if you must do it, don't do it with bishop e2. Play bishop d3 instead. But as many grandmasters know, this is basically just a draw. Knight f6, castle, castle, bishop g5, bishop g4. And black only needs to find one trick here, just to copycat. And that's not too hard. So it's basically equal. Sometimes there are some little tricks, but it's basically equal, so it's not a big deal. So anyways, bishop e2 is not good because it's too passive. And that is the main reason I don't think anyone should play the exchange variation because you're trying to draw too hard. You're white. You don't have to try too hard to draw. Try to play a good game, fight, and then you'll achieve the draw if you need it, if you play well. You don't have to force it. Now look, white is already a little passive, which is not good. Knight f6, castle, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, bishop f5. I already like the way black plays here, because white is trying to kind of you know, be solid, but he says, okay, I'll do exactly the opposite things you do, which is a good tactic when you're facing the exchange variation. Actually, sometimes, I have to go back for that, they would even dare play c5, the same idea that I showed for white, a tempo down just to have an interesting game. It's not, it doesn't really mean that black will be worse, it means it's going to be a bit more lively than in this case. But even in this case, black shows how to play this line. Puts the bishops on d6 and f5, which is totally the opposite of the white play, which is h4 and e2. Knight c3. Knight c3 is not a good move, because that knight will have no future on c3. What else could we play if we're trying to play well for white here? Yes. Knight bd2 is an option. It's good. What else? What else could we play which makes sense in this position? Yeah. Yeah, c3. Just making sure this pawn is protected. But that actually, it's kind of... You can mix up the orders. You can still go knight d2. Now you might even have like tricky ideas of queen b3. Because I remember this position. Actually... 
Karana played this against Anand, and he came up with a plan like this. This is a little risky because this g5 pawn can, g5 h6 pawn can become a little weak. Bishop g3 and knight e4. And takes, and even though black's position is weakened a little bit, but look, in the long term, white will face a pawn storm on the king side. So it's already nothing sorts of equal. It's a fighting game. And this is actually what uh, Fabi did against Anand and won a very interesting game. So, yeah, definitely c3 or knight d2 should have been pre preferred still. So knight c3, c6. Now, the main problem is this knight has no future. So white plays knight e5. But I'm still not that happy with that move. As you can see that all the white moves are a, bit, a little bit scattered. There's no consistency between the plans. One of the times he plays on the king's side, then plays a little bit on the queen's side. And this bishop on e2 is too passive. So instead of knight e5, how could we improve the position for white? Yes. Rook e1. Rook e1. Bringing the rook into the game. That's a good idea. Or what else? How can we get rid of our bad pieces? Yes. Bishop d3. Bishop d3. Just as simple. You have a bad piece, exchange it off. Takes. Queen takes. And this is just fine for white. Knight d7. And actually here, white has a very nice plan. It does nothing, it's still dead equal, but it's a nice plan to remember. What can white do here? Again, think about which piece looks the most awkward in white's camp. Try to improve it. Yes? Knight e2. Knight e2. And where you're heading? To? G3. To g3. Although be wary of ideas of g5 before they just capture your bishop. And that will be right. painful. I mean, you have knight f5, that's true. But if I play queen c7 now, knight g3 would be suicidal because of g5. And you can try to gamble, but why would you want to gamble? So you could go bishop g3, and then it's boring. Okay, so there's one more idea here that is kind of edgy, probably not even that good, but you could even do knight d1 with the same plan as you've been mentioning, is knight d3, knight f5. Oh, b6 is not good, but like queen c7, knight d3, and now you actually have space for your bishop on g3. This is actually rarely done with white, this knight d1, knight e3 plan, but it's not that bad. Sometimes in the Petrov, or in the Russian defense, black does play the same way, but first playing like knight f8 and knight, knight e8. Anyways, back to the game, knight e5, knight d7, which is fine, takes, takes, queen d2, rook e8, and finally bishop d3. I like this move. Bishop e7, rook a1, and even in the most innocuous positions where you think that, oh, I could be safe, there's no way I can mess it up, it's possible to mess it up. Black's next move is not good. Why is queen b6 not so great? Yes. Uh, well, white can play knight a4. Well, if you play knight a4, I can move my queen away. I don't see why is that terrible. Yes. Rook takes bishop. Yeah, rook takes bishop. If I take you back. Uh, bishop takes knight. Yeah. 
g takes. Yeah. And I'm not saying that white is totally winning because there's still f5, but the whole landscape changed. This rook, I mean, this position is a bit more shaky with this rook kind of hanging in the air. I can also repeat because you can't run because you get checkmated. But if I really want to fight, and why wouldn't I want to fight, I could just go knight e2 and just go the long route with knight g3, knight h5, and it's suddenly great for white. So even when you feel that you're in the driver's seat, you should be careful. It's easy to mess up these positions. So if we're black and we're conscious that queen b6 is, uh, it's a little dangerous. How could we prepare against that and then maybe play queen b6? Because clearly this queen b6, rook takes e7 is very dangerous. Yeah, bishop e6, the simplest. And that's kind of prepares queen b6 stuff. But if you really want to get rid of some tension, let's say I'm just waiting. You can go knight d7. Takes, takes. And I know f4 looks scary, but you always have knight f6. Now, I'm sad that I would even consider this move, but that's not too good. So just let's stick with knight f6. Because if f5, you just put the bishop back. And even though this pawn is very active, it just does no big damage. So it's not a big deal. So bishop e6 would have been a really good move. I even would love to give it an exclamation. Queen b6, <coughs> excuse me, is... Uh, Adventurous, ambitious, but rook takes e7 would have been painful. So queen e3, but this gives away the pawn. Rook b1, but here black comes up with a very nice idea. Try to think for yourself and think what you would play in this position. Actually, we have a choice here. We can take the knight, maybe, or we can move it to a3. Yes? Take the knight, yeah? You can? Well, actually, you can. That's what he did. And the nice thing is, bishop h7, he has this very nice idea of knight takes h7. Takes, takes. This is a rare occasion you actually get three pieces against the queen. And to be honest with you, I always felt that, oh, the queen is strong enough, but usually it's not. The queen is not that strong against these knight pieces because eventually the three pieces will coordinate and then the queen is just hopeless against all of these beasts. So rook takes b7 comes, knight f6, g3, and knight e4. And actually, that's the main issue with these. I'm not even sure if this is great. But just to prove something, this is the problem when you have a queen, that actually you run into too many attacks. So if I would want to go to a3, you can again attack me. If I would want to go to f3, you attack me on knight d2. So there's just not many places I could hide. Probably queen d3 would be better, and 
then it might actually get dicey for black because both of those pieces are attacked. On the other hand, he played queen a5 and missed this idea of bishop d8, which is super nice. Because after this, this d7 bishop is freed up, and if, uh, if this bishop arrives on b6, the game is over. Because white had some chances until these uh, light squared pieces got really active, but after bishop b6, it's going to be over. Queen a3, bishop h3, rook b1, bishop b6. And now it's really bad, because white has back rank issues already, this knight is a monster, this bishop is a monster, and what is this queen doing on a3? Not much. Queen f3, one move threat, rook f8, maybe even bishop e6 is better. g4, but black is so winning that he has another trick up his sleeve and plays knight d2. Takes, knight takes b1, g5. And even though this position is hopeless for white, this g5 idea still deserves lots of credit. Because if you're lost, still try. Still try to confuse your opponent. The best way to confuse your opponent is to attack his king, or her king. h takes, queen h5, knight c3, very good. Knight is heading back to e4, which will be a very safe spot for the knight. Takes, knight e4, h4, takes, Bishop takes, and it's basically totally lost here. Queen d7, knight c5, yeah. Now everything is falling. And obviously, this will end very soon. And white design for a good reason, because this is just totally lost. So, Blank's play wasn't perfect, but he was aiming to unstabilize the position and that's the way you should play if you're facing the exchange variation try to create chances it's not an immediate draw it's just an equal position all right let me see so this game was played by Semenyak Daniel and Perry Colson our very own Perry Colson so he's playing um, White is a 1976-rated player, and Perry is rated 1676, if I remember correctly. Now we will be black, because black won this game. C4, E5. This is probably one of the best moves against the English, the E5 move. There are billions of other moves. Knight F6 is fine. E6 is fine. There's plenty of moves you could play against c4, but e5 is the most challenging. And this actually was played in many of the Kazem Caruana games in the World Championship match. Knight c3, knight f6, g3, knight c6, bishop c5. And what Perry chooses is a very standard plan. He says, okay, you want to develop your pieces, you try to put pressure on me on the queen side, but I'll just put a bishop on c5, hide it somewhere here, and wait for your actions. e4. Hmm. Is e4 a good move? What would be our first thought about e4? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, you're right. This is not really good because it's blocking your own bishop. The whole concept when you're playing the English is to have this beautiful, beautiful fianchetto bishop striking down on black's position. So if e4 is not that good, how should white continue then? Yes. Yeah, e3. They often play this way. Because castles, knight e2, you keep the bishop uh, diagonal open while also you're preparing the idea of expanding with d4. Now I'm not claiming white is better, 
but this is still a better version of the game. E4 was played, which is not good because this bishop is now boxed in, and compared to that bishop, this bishop on c5 is a monster. I would already rather be black than white. d6, knight g2, castle, castle, bishop e6, d3, bishop g4. Is bishop g4 a good move? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why is it a good move? So you're saying the bishop is not doing anything on e6, so it would be better off on g4, right? That's yeah. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have an idea instead of bishop g4? Or would you agree that uh, buried that bishop g4 is good, or the best move? It's spinning the queen, and the next move like uh, we move the knight to d4. Yeah, so it, it does spin the queen, yeah. but can we do something better with black? Yes? I would just develop queen g7. Yeah. Uh, go to h3 at the right moment, maybe. Yeah. I would also think about queen d7 with the idea of bishop h3. Bishop g4, even though it's not a bad move, feels a little bit hesitant. And you are wasting some time. Although it's forgiven because it's a closed position. If this would be like an open Sicilian dragon, waiting, losing two tempi like that would be punished. Bishop e3, bishop b4. And actually I like this move, bishop b4. Because with bishop g4 move, this makes good sense. Because you're trying to pin everything, pinning all of black, uh, white's pieces, f3, f3 is a bit too much. How else could we unpin ourselves with white? Because f3 I think is a bit weakening. Yeah. A3. A3, well a3 I went to b4 with the intention of taking on c3. Okay. Yes? H3. H3, yeah. Now, again, I could try take. So you can take here first. Let's say takes. But eventually, I'll take the b7 pawn. Also, I would consider the idea of queen c2 just getting away from these pins, which makes sense to me. Also, maybe in the future, if I start rolling with my pawn, you might have to decide where you want to move your bishop. After f3, it's clear that you're going to move your bishop. So he plays bishop c8. Now I'm not a fan of bishop c8. Bishop d7 would be a little better. Obviously not bishop e6. Why not, though? What's wrong with bishop e6? Yes? F4, F5 a little bit, but there's a bigger issue with this bishop e6 move. It runs deep into knight d5. Was that what you wanted to say? Yeah. The problem is you want to take with the knight, but you cannot because you will get forked. You just get forked. Then don't get forked. And if you have to take with the bishop, that's not your goal. You want to keep this bishop for later action. Especially that they would go f4 here, and then white would open up the position, and where are bishops? They're gone. So that's not good. So therefore, bishop d7 should have been preferred. Bishop c8 is... The concept is not bad, but bishop d7 is better. All right, bishop c8. Knight d5, knight d8. It's an interesting thought. Um, it's a little passive, though. a3. I don't like a3 much. Because it's kind of inviting black to play 
the best moves possible. And sometimes when you see your opponent kind of hesitating and not playing the right moves, you, you should and you could wait around to see what do they really want, what are their true intentions. That's the problem with this A3 move by White, that it shows and it forces the opponent to play the best moves possible. Don't do that. So what should White do instead? A3, A3 that's what they played. Yes. F4. F4, yeah. F4 is a good move. What else can you play? Yes. Rook C1. Rook C1, okay. Now, if we know what black wants to do, and that's bishop C5, What moves would we consider then? It's clear that sooner or later black will try to do that. Yes? Take the bishop. Okay, you can take the bishop, yeah. Take, and as you mentioned before, d4 is an idea. And especially as the position is opening up a little bit, you're going to play f4 in the near future. These bishops will become even more powerful with the time passing. The other idea I was kind of trying to refer to is king h1. Because when bishop c5 is played, you can move your bishop away if you want to. Especially, I like this idea of king h1 here, because you're giving a free hand to your opponent to decide what they want to do. And if you see that your opponent is unsure of what they want to do, just give them options to mess up. That's why I would consider king h1 as an idea. So a3, and I don't like this move. Bishop c5, b4, takes stakes. And knight f6 actually deserves a lot of credit because Perry realized that the knight is not doing much on e8. So, let's activate it. And sometimes, we shouldn't, be, we shouldn't feel ashamed of correcting our mistakes, even if it costs us an extra move. Now, if it's a sharp battle, when everything hinges on a tempo, don't do it. Obviously, you get made it. That's not a good idea. But, this is a close position. We won't get checkmated in the near future, so you have time to improve your pieces. So do so. Knight f6, b5, knight e7, f4, c6. Another good move by Perry, preparing this idea of queen b6, and also hinting at maybe just undermining the white center. And this is actually kind of like this traditional English position that looks fancy for white, but it's not as great as it looks. Because even if you take on e5, d takes e5, I know the idea of taking on f6 looks juicy, but you don't have enough pieces to attack, right? This f5 square is guarded, and even if you attack the f6 pawn, I'll just defend it with the king, and there's not going to be a lot of drama going on here. And when you play f5, we always dream about this position with white saying, oh, I can go g4, g5, and slowly roll you over. But if black has enough time to strike in the center, you'll be in big trouble. So that's what Perry does, plays queen b6, showing that you're pinned, my friend. Rook f3, c takes b5. He sees the free pawn, he takes the free pawn. And if you see a free pawn, take it. Rook b1, bishop d7. This is fine. You could also go a6. 
takes takes. It's just an extra pawn, so that's good. Bishop d7, knight c3, a6. When you're up a pawn, there's no need to rush into action. You can just defend your pieces, and slowly you should be able to win. Queen b3, knight c6. This knight is heading into d4. Which, like, the only issue I have with knight c6, that this knight was defending a vital square, a d5 square. When we move the knight, we remove the defender. So that could lead to trouble. Queen b2, knight d4, rook f2, bishop c6. But black is handling this position really well so far because he says, okay, I have enough time to post this knight into this beautiful square, and I'm not scared of your jumps because I'll just take all of your pieces. h3, rook d8. So what do you guys think about rook d8? Is it good? Is it bad? Would you suggest something else? Yes? On d8, it's always going to be stuck behind the b6 pawn. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, the c file could become open. He plays, like, c takes b5. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer rook c8. Yes, uh, I love your reasoning. Rook d8 doesn't do anything, and this d line will never open up or not in like 30 moves. But after rook c8, as you said, one thing that we can predict that the c line will get open sometime in the future. Either the way of taking and takes, and now we already have this rook on the c line, or by the way of knight d5, takes, let's say takes, takes, and c takes. Now they can go e takes, but you can just move the queen and this rook move was useful, right? So rook d8 is in this sense not bad, but a little bit inaccurate. Rook d8, knight d5, knight takes d5, and I don't like knight takes d5. I would prefer taking with the bishop. And the reason is, I'd rather push a pawn here and say I'm safe forever than thinking about what will I do if white goes f6. Now, our position is so solid that it shouldn't be a big deal. But if we can't play f6 ourselves with black, why wouldn't we want to play that? So I would have preferred bishop takes d5. So knight takes d5, c takes d5, bishop d7, a4. And h5 is definitely not a good move. That's not the side we should be playing on. What should we be doing here with black? Yes? F6. F6, just to stop any counterplay on the king side, or what else? F6 is this super cautious Petrosian kind of move. We can go aggressive if we want to. Yeah, rook c8. And as we can see, in closed positions, you have the time to correct your mistakes. Rook d8 was a little bit iffy. He plays a4, and you can say, oh, never mind, I'll play rook c8 now. And would be great. h5 is actually just helping white, because that we're not going to do and give checkmate on the king side in the upcoming future, so h5 is not that great. Knight e2, takes, takes, g6, which is fine, at least these pawns are protecting each other. But already, white has some level of play. g4, h4. And to be honest, I like h4, because black realizes that, oh, I'm not supposed to be playing on the king side. So at least he gives an effort and tries to close it up. Queen d2, king g7. That's again very good. This is kind of like a standard Sicilian play. 
you're trying to take away these vital squares. And here, white blunders. What should white do? You can see that he plays f6, which is a bad move. How should white follow up here? Rook c1. Rook c1. What's your idea behind rook c1? Does he fight his open sword? Yes. Fight? Well, Slowly. but in general, we can feel that Black's king is a little bit fishy looking. So we need to find a move around that king. Yes. Queen g5. Yes, queen g5. And this would be super duper loss for black. And the only reason black is lost is because he voluntarily started weakening his king side. This would be just brilliant without h5 g6. But after these two weakening moves, it's lost. But it's interesting to see that f6, which is, let's be honest, one of the most natural moves, and if we're playing like quick games, we might play it really fast. It's not good. And this is actually like a Sicilian pattern. And Colson finds this. King h7, queen g5, rook h8. And the problem is, for white right now, is that he's not able to checkmate. And if you're not able to checkmate in these type of positions, you're most of the time worse. And white is worse here. Queen g3, rook c8, finally. h4, trying to attack, but it's just too slow. Rook c2, just putting pressure and using this pin yet again. Rook f1, b takes a4. If you see a free pawn, take the free pawn. h5, queen d4. Probably queen d4 is a little risky. Would even maybe consider g5 as well. Because I don't really see how you could come close to my pawn, because I would just take you. But anyway, queen d4 still makes sense. Takes, takes, bishop h3. And black plays a3. What else could black do here in this position? That would also make sense. It's also kind of like a Sicilian theme. Yeah? King f7. King f7. And what's the idea behind king f7? Uh, prevents pushing f7, mm -hmm. but then also like Shield. Yeah, and this king is very safe because of this pawn specifically, and black is just totally winning here. So a3 was played, and good or bad, white needed to play f7 and hope for the best. But king g2 is not good, takes, takes, and now Perry plays the king f7 move, which is the key, and now black is just totally winning because the attack is gone, and these pawns start marching. Rook a2, b5 is played. b5 is a normal way of winning this position, but how else could we wrap this game up? I actually prefer the other way of uh, playing. Yes? Rook c8, okay, that's a way. How else? Can we push our pawns? Yes? Well, yeah, you take, I take your pawn. Bishop f5? No. So the other way I would consider playing is a5. Takes an a4. The reason I would do it this way, because this would limit the scope of this rook. And my plan is, is just to start pushing my b pawn. And you can't stop me. The problem with b5 is that he takes on a3, and can I push the a pawn? 
Obviously not. And so the main issue is that I have like this backwards pawn that I have to support somehow. And you're just making this technical phase way harder for yourself. Rook a8. I mean, it's still winning, and rook a8 is a good move. But black could have just gone a5, a4, and just win. d4, a nice move, because he's trying for tricks. And when you're losing, you should try everything to avoid losing. Or at least, you know, give your opponent a little bit of a headache. King takes f6, g5. Nasty check, but luckily king e7 still works. D takes e5, bishop takes h3, e takes h3, d takes e5. Did black achieve his goal? Yeah, he did. He has all these passed pawns ready to march, and white has really no counterplay. So he goes rook h7, king b6, rook g7, b4. And this is one of those things that many people, especially young players, forget. In a rook end game, you must start pushing your passers. Otherwise, you might be in trouble. Takes, king c5, king b5. And I also like this one. The pawn is protected with, by the king and also takes away this vital square from the rook, which is often annoying. And it's not, as, not always that easy to promote those pawns if the rook is stopping you. King g3, a5. b3 was also good, but, a, but I see nothing wrong with a5. Rook c7, a4, g6, rook g8. Hmm. Was rook g8 necessary? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's not necessary. What could black do instead? Push the pawn. So I often see this in young players. They get scared that the pawn reaches uh, the g7 square. Don't be scared of that. Obviously, right now, there's like this kind of trick, but you can just take it, queens, and I queen myself, so I'm up a rook. So, usually, the way that they can try to punish you is to go to f7 and go to rook f8. And when the rook is on f7 and trying to block you from defense, now you have to play the critical move, I mean, you can queen now, but if our pawn was on a3, we still need to know that defensive method. Yeah? Rook g8. Rook g8. And it's very tough to promote that pawn once the rook gets to g8. So I feel rook g8 now was a little early. g7, a3. But it's still dead winning. Here, a2. Rook a7. b3. D6, rook takes, takes, queens, and now it's just hopelessly lost. Now I still don't like queen e1 check, because black could just go, let's say, queen d1. And if the king comes closer, how can we finish off this game? What's the easiest way? Yes? B2 is good, but... Let's notice what our opponent wants to do. He still wants his king to climb up the stairwell, and we don't want that. Yeah? Yes? Yeah, queen d6. Just cutting you off. The rook can't move because it has to defend this pawn, and it's now very easy. Now I'm going to start pushing my pawn. Sometimes, if you have the time, it's a good idea to stop all counterplay possible. And that's why I would play queen d6 first. So he played queen e1, g5, king f6, which was actually helping white a little bit. It doesn't matter here, but in other positions, these few tempers could mean a lot. 
b2, king e7, b1, queens, d8, takes, takes, and queen takes e4. And white resigned. Overall, I still like this game by black because A, when he had the time, he improved his pieces. Two, he was patient enough uh, to win the game. So when he was already winning, he took the time to bring the pieces to the open file, make sure his king was defended. Yes, h5 and g6 was not a good idea, and don't follow that ever, because you're playing against yourself. If you have a majority on the queen side, focus there. Especially when we got the chance to play f6, do so, stop all the counterplay where your opponent is trying to play, and just focus on the other side. So overall, I really like this game. And this will be, and this was your choice. Thank you. Mm -hmm.